Welcome to the Morning Meditation Podcast with your host, Joe Consford, brought to you by HardwareOnTheSquare.com. Summary of the Doctrine of the Holy Spirit, John 14, 16 through 18. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. The doctrine of the Holy Spirit is very controversial, to say the least. I want to present a simple summary of the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. It will not be extensive, and the value of it to you will depend on your running the references and reading the verses for yourself. The Holy Spirit, as a result of the intersection of Jesus, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. The work of the Holy Spirit is seen in the word comforter. Jesus speaks of another comforter. Jesus was their comforter at the time. He spoke these words. So the Holy Spirit is to take his place once he departs after the resurrection to be our high priest in the presence of God. Today, Jesus is the one mediator between God and man. 1 Timothy 2.5 The Holy Spirit is a gift. Note the words of Christ. And he, the Father, shall give you another comforter. The word give means to give something to someone. Roy Henson used to say, The Holy Spirit is not a reward for our faithfulness, but God's gift to our weakness. That is so true. When I am willing to take the low place, the weak place, I am in a position to receive the work of the Holy Spirit in me. Too many of us try to climb to find Him, and He is always just out of reach. We need to crawl, because there is where He is. The Holy Spirit is, as someone has said, Heaven's throne gift. This is brought out in Acts 2.33. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. Jesus received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost. This is in keeping with number one above, where Jesus said, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. The Holy Spirit is a gift of the Father to the Son, and the Son to His people. The Holy Spirit is not new to the people of God. The coming of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost was to fulfill a special role in this age. The Holy Spirit was active in creation. Genesis 1-2 Strove with man about his need of salvation before the flood. Genesis 6-3 Build Old Testament believers for special work. Exodus 31.3 and 35.31 The Holy Spirit was vexed at wrong actions in the Old Testament. Isaiah 63.10 The Holy Spirit indwelt Moses. Isaiah 63.11 So indwelling is not exclusively New Testament. Since Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes into the life of the believer at salvation. Ephesians 1.13 says, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. This is a definitive statement stating when the Holy Spirit comes into the believer. For the believer to pray for the coming of the Holy Spirit, that is what many are doing when they pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, 
would be like me asking you over and over again to come to my house when you're standing right there at the time I'm asking you. Get this picture in your mind. You are standing in my living room. I stand there looking at you and I say, will you please come to my house? Please, oh please come to my house. You would get a little uneasy if I continued to ask you to do something when it was obvious that you had already done it. If the Holy Spirit was in the habit of speaking out loud, I think he would say to someone who continued to pray for him to come, Hey, dummy, get up off your face and read Ephesians 1.13. And when you have read it, get your hands off the steering wheel of your life and let me take over. It is not my presence you need, it is my control. The Holy Spirit is the seal of our salvation. Ephesians 1.13 He doesn't seal us. He is the seal. The body of the believer is a temple of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6.19-20 He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. 1 Corinthians 6.17 The Holy Spirit seals us until the day of redemption. Ephesians 4.30 The Holy Spirit is God's earnest to us of our inheritance. Ephesians 1.14 This is God's guarantee to us that He will finish what He began in us when He saved us. The Holy Spirit is grieved when we sin as Christians. Ephesians 4.30 We are to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5.18 Filling can take place over and over again, and it should. Therefore, it is not wrong to pray for the filling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person and not a principle. The following can only be said of a person. He speaks and calls, Acts 13.2. He commands and permits, Acts 16.6 and 7. He leads, Romans 8.14. He instructs, John 16.13. He comforts, John 14.6. John 14.26. He intercedes, Romans 8.26. He bears witness, Romans 8.16. He can be grieved, Ephesians 4.30. Note, all of these expressions can only be said of a living, personal being. The Bible is given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, and 2 Peter 1, 21. The Holy Spirit will never lead or inspire an action contrary to what he has said in the Word. This is the only safety we have against Satan. Satan is an Im- in- imitator and will imitate the work of the Holy Spirit. How do we know the difference between the actions of the Holy Spirit and Satan? The answer is the Word of God. Satan will not stay with the Scriptures. I have an experience that is in conflict with the Scripture. You can be sure that it did not come from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit indwells all believers, Romans 8 9. The Holy Spirit is in us to empower our testimony of God's saving grace in our lives as we witness, Acts 1 8. The Holy Spirit has a worldwide witness, John 16 7 through 11. The missionary always finds that the Holy Spirit beat him to the mission field. The Holy Spirit is sent in Jesus' name, John 14, 26. Just as Jesus was sent in his Father's name, the Holy Spirit is sent in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the power to mortify the deeds of the body, thereby enabling the believer to live a holy life, Romans eight thirteen. The Holy Spirit gives assurance to us that we are already God's children. Romans 8.16 
The Holy Spirit is our guide. Romans 8.14 The Holy Spirit is the Lord. Jesus so works through the person of the Holy Spirit that they are used synonymously in 2 Corinthians 3.17. The Holy Spirit can be quenched. 1 Thessalonians 5.19 Quench not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. John 14.26 and John 16.13 The Holy Spirit produces the fruit of the Spirit in the life of the yielded believer. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Walking in the Spirit is the only way to have victory over the flesh. Galatians 5, 16 and 17. The Holy Spirit makes intercession for the believers. Romans 8, 26. The Holy Spirit leads us in worship. Romans 8, 15 and Galatians 4, 6. The term Abba, Father, is very intimate. It is like a little boy saying, Daddy, Daddy. The yearnings of the inner man to worship and adore God is caused by the indwelling Holy Spirit. Spirituality is the proper relation to the Holy Spirit, just like salvation is a proper relation to the Lord Jesus. 1 Corinthians 2, 14-15 Regeneration is a work of the Holy Spirit. John 3.3 3 and Titus 3.5 Salvation is a spiritual birth and a new man comes into existence at his birth. 2 Corinthians 5.17 and Ephesians 4.24 The Holy Spirit is the restrainer of evil and the one who keeps Antichrist from making his move to take over the world until God's time is right. 2 Thessalonians 2 7. The Holy Spirit is given to the believer until the day of redemption. The rapture or the resurrection. Ephesians 1 14 and Ephesians 4 30. This is not intended to be an extensive study of the Holy Spirit, but a simple doctrinal summary of the Holy Spirit as he operates in this age of grace. There are a lot of issues that I did not on purpose deal with, since it is not the purpose of this meditation to argue over things that divide. All saved people are in the same family together. There are certain basic issues that we should be in agreement on. I hope this outline will help those of you who are interested in the study of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless these words to our hearts today. Join us each day as we meditate on the Word together. Be sure to subscribe and leave an objective review on your favorite podcast player app. You can always find us on the web at hardwareonthesquare.com slash podcast.